Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Doctor Projections. Unfortunately, Eric is out today again, so you know I'll be going alone. I, I hope this is the last time that I'll be going alone. But today we'll be discussing the impact of the current retirements we're seeing for the 2022 House uh, midterm elections and discussing how those retirements might actually end up impacting the chances of Democrats retaining control of the House and Republicans potentially winning back the House. And with that being said, let's go right into it. So I actually pulled up the 2018 House elections, which was a Democratic landslide where Democrats picked up 41 seats. And I first want to take a look at the retirements page, because in 2018, there was a slew of Republican retirements from the House. Many of the retirements were also uh, good candidates, you would say, as they ran several points ahead of uh, you know, a presidential candidate, for example. And a great example of that is uh, my representative, uh, former representative Rodney Freelingheisen. In uh, 2016, Donald Trump won the district, but barely, around one point. Ronnie Freelingheisen won uh, by, I think, like almost 20-ish points. And, you know, of course, if he ran in 2018, I think he still would have lost. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a, it was a growing pattern of retirements of incumbents. And as you know, Republican uh, incumbents typically do have an incumbency advantage. So when an incumbent retires, it increases the chance of that seat potentially flipping. And, you know, Ronnie Freelingheisen was one example where Mikey Shuttle outran or is not our end, but she won by around 11 points and the district flipped by 33 points. Another example, uh, Frank Lobiondo, I didn't check out specifically uh, what, the, what the results were in 2016, but I do know that his district flipped decently to uh, Jeff Vanger when he was a Democrat. Uh, and there are several other ones on this list that further demonstrate, for example, Martha McSally, Arizona too, although, you know, I think Ann Kirkpatrick would have beaten Martha McSally anyway. Uh, several districts with retirements that, you know, caused the seat to flip. So I did pull up the 2018 House map, and let's see where Democrats exactly had pickups. So a lot of the pickups did end up changing back in 2020, you know, SC1, uh, the two Iowa, or not actually, but uh, Losback and Finkenhauer, their districts flipped back. Ben McAdams flipped back. TJ Cox. A lot of the gains that Democrats made in the House in 2018 ended up flipping back to the uh, Republicans in 2020. Actually, I don't want to say a lot of them, but it was the districts that people weren't expecting to flip. So, you know, TJ Cox was not expected to win. Uh, Joe Cunningham was not expected to win. And, you know, Kendra Horn was not expected to win. All of them just went back to the Republicans in 2020, which does end up hurting the Democrats' chances of retaining the House in 2022 because they do have such a slim majority now. But in general, with more retirements, that is not good for that party. And so far, we've gotten a couple of retirements, as you can see from the title of the video. The first was Ron Kind, Ron Kind, uh, Wisconsin representative, third district. He is a pretty good candidate. And if we pull up the statistics here, sorry, I went to that too early, but in 2020, Donald Trump won the district by around four points or actually five, almost five points. Ron Kine still managed to hang on by three points. So he outran Donald Trump, uh, rather outran Joe Biden by around eight points, which is pretty impressive. Uh, there was only, there were only seven representatives or I think it was seven or eight rep Democratic representatives that survived in a district that Trump won. So the fact that Ron Kine is retiring is pretty hurtful uh, for the or hurts them the Democratic Party in in the state of Wisconsin, since he is a very well-known name as he was able to run ahead by this many points. So again, this is spelling trouble for the Democrats potentially. Sherry Bustos of Illinois 17 also won re-election, uh, if I can pull it up. She won pretty narrowly. She won in uh, around four points. 
and Trump still managed to win this district narrowly by one, almost two points. And this, again, is showing that with these good incumbents retiring, good meaning that they're able to outrun the Democratic candidate on the top of the ticket by several points, that is not good for the Democrats because if they run a new type of candidate, maybe they don't, they don't have as much name recognition as the old candidate had. They won't be performing as well, which opens the door to a potential flip in those elections. And this is when I bring up 2020. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the districts with the good candidates, uh, or rather sorry, a lot of districts where people weren't expecting the district to flip in uh, 2018, they just came back to the Democrat uh, Republicans. For example, New Mexico II, uh, Torres Small was defeated by Harrell, uh, the two Iowa districts, as I mentioned, as well. So where does this leave the Democratic Party for the House races now? So in general, the Democrats are probably going to lose a couple seats through redistricting. I know some people are saying the other way around. Some people are saying maybe Democrats gain seats, but I do think probably Democrats will end up losing a couple of seats. For example, uh, they're going to lose potentially a seat in New Jersey. Uh, they're probably going to lose a seat in Georgia. I would guess uh, Carolyn Bordeaux is going to lose her seat there. In Texas, they might lose, you know, maybe one or two. You know, I'm not a very big redistricting expert. Uh, as you can see, I didn't really make any predictions on redistricting because I don't really know how to use Dave's redistricting tool that well. Uh, but they are probably going to lose a couple of districts nationwide. Of course, Republicans, Democrats might gain a couple, for example, maybe one or two in New York, one or two in Illinois. But overall, Democrats are going to be losing some seats. And that's pretty bad considering the margins already this tight. It's around like a, I believe a three seat majority. If Ron Kine is retiring, uh, that could cause, that could be, I mean, probably will be a pickup for the Republicans. I wouldn't say it's super easy, but I, I would be more leaning towards the Republican to, on winning that race. So that's already one seat lost. Sherry Bustos, she is kind of lucky because I think Democrats will be able to gerrymander this district somehow so that, uh, uh, so that Democrats can keep one of the seats. So I think she should be okay if, if Democrats do end up gerrymandering this correctly. But if this pattern of retirements continues across the country, that could be pretty bad for the Democrats, you, you know, another example of a potential retirement, and obviously I don't, I pretty, it's probably not going to happen, but if a candidate like Andy Kim ends up retiring, that seat probably also flips. Uh, you know, he's, he, I don't think he's going to retire. He's, he's actually a very decent candidate. Uh, he outran Biden by several points, but if candidates like him end up retiring, that is very bad news for the Democrats. So I haven't made a general house prediction yet, uh, but in general, I would say that Republicans are favored to take back the House. I will do a more specific uh, prediction on a later date. But for now, all I can say is the retirements of the Democrats already are, are, are not good to an already uh, unfavorable potential map from the redistricting process. And with that being said, that is the end of the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you like our content, please subscribe. And we'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.